thank all the speaker for maintaining the time. We have another 12 minutes for the question answer. All the presentation was so well made. Uh, I don't find much question will be there. I'm Arvinda Singh Brara, Chairman and Managing Director of Mantech Consultants. My question is to uh, Mr. Kabadia on, uh, you know, there was a very major project plan in Gujarat uh, for water desalinization and storage called Kalpasa. Uh, so I'd like to know what has happened to that uh, great project. Actually, <coughs> I am fortunately the chief engineer of that project as well. So the project is in the process of shaping. Three components were there. One was a barrage. It was having a storage capacity of 600 million cubic meter. That is to come up first. Thereafter, whatever stored water is there, it will be diverted through a diverter channel. That diverter channel is called component number two. It is to follow the construction of barrage and thereafter the main Kalpasar dam which is going to be a huge one it's an ambitious project very costly and the economic constraints have put certain challenges on the way to it but Bhadbur barrage is likely to come in a near future maybe maybe another three years of time that's the status is the project still alive Bhadbur barrage is alive Barbud barrage, the barrage, the first component is alive. Yeah, it is to it is to be followed by the diversion channel, and thereafter we shall be putting on track the dam called Kalpsar. Because it is very ambitious, very expensive, I don't see it is to come up so early. And today's economic constraints, horrible constraints, and our state economy is also moving from bad to worse day by day. Um, sorry to interrupt, but I do remember that there were people who had committed funds, you know, from industry, etc. So the funding was in place, actually, uh, because if you, if you give return for money, then fund is available. It had tourism aspect, it had power, it had other things. So I do not know, uh, something went wrong because the money was available and would still be available if it is conceived properly. See, actually, the PPP mode Nowadays, the road sector is also having some problems in actualizing the PPP mode. The dams never they could come up in the PPP mode. This was the first dam for which some PPP model was looking workable at a far horizon. But in the today's situation, all the PPP partners, erstwhile they were really ready to invest something, now they are not really prepared. Maybe at that time we would have gone for a very hasty decision and then the project would have come up earlier. That could be. But in that given situation today, there is no partner in the PPP to come to the fore. Everybody is skeptical. Uh, okay, fine. Um like from all of your presentation, uh, kind of concluding line was like there is a management and the political issue for each uh, problem. Okay, if you want to provide any solution, you have at the end you have to face money issue and political issue and management issue. So I want to ask you all like, uh, do you think the privatization of the water industry could help and overcome this issue, and how it will like? going to implement in India. Your question is basically a, a, I mean a, a thing is the water is an infrastructure. Water is a component of infrastructure. Infrastructure as such is something which cannot be fully privatized. It, it doesn't come with a pure profit motive in the way you can run a commercial industry or a commercial enterprise. So the, the, the entire thing has to be coordinated and managed at the governmental level. If you do not have that kind of governmental level management, it, it cannot come. Secondly, again, as I said, it's a shared resource. Nobody can have an exclusivist approach. Even the community-based approach that is being advertised or that is being propagated, also has the danger of becoming exclusivist. 
today you make it communist uh, community based approach and see what further happens in kaveri you have already made it karnataka made it what has happened it has only led to all kinds of riots and law and order situation so the issue is that it is a resource which has to be managed by consensus and it is a resource in which the governments of the day cannot really withdraw and 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 let it Uh, remain open like if you if you want to make toys or if you want to make uh, you know detergents that will not happen in water sector uh, i'd like to add something yeah. i think japaria will uh, i have a deep question like in your presentation you mentioned that european countries are like well within like well going in the water sector and waste water sector i guess because they are already privatized in these uh, things I need to understand your question. Okay. Your privatization. Europe is not privatized. The privatization of water resources is a no-no worldwide um, because it's a resource which is what we are talking of a watershed. So who owns the watershed? Um, what is the proportion of a watershed? Is there something which is a debatable question? I'll not go into it. uh so it involves different countries different communities and there might be a resource where you are blessed with the resource and there at the fag end you might also need that resource so who needs more is a qu question so you have a private interest we will be messing up with the problem uh i'll give you one uh, unrelated information even rainwater which we presume is ours is not ours uh there is a legislation in, in different countries in different context that who owns the water so we are talking of rivers and we are states fighting amongst each other but in nine states of western us you cannot even conserve a bucket full of rain water in india we are promoting rain water harvesting at a macro level but you cannot conserve rain water because it's a community resource till the time we come to that particular situation that we'll be fighting for every drop of water uh, whether it's private or public a conservation uh, effort must be promulgated i would add some two points to your question number one whether to consider water as a commodity privatization can be done only if you accept water as a commodity and water cannot be taken as commodity even legally no in no other part of the world water is really treated as a commodity yes some privatization related to activity inside water sector it is okay some activities are privatized in many countries but water is not viewed as a commodity and that's why 100% privatization is not done number 2 indian constitution has a provision called sovereign functions of the government in the sovereign functions of the government this is a part of and that's why constitutionally it cannot be done number 3 so many judgments of the supreme court under article 21 that is right to life supreme court has promulgated very clearly it has upheld that water availability for the purpose of sustaining human body is also associated with the article 21 that is right to life and that's why it is treated as a fundamental right and that's why it's being fundamental right it is the scope of the government to look after that and that's why privatization to that extent that water will be viewed as commodity is not possible even constitutionally thank you i would only add that in india ownership of water is very vague not i take out one bucket of water from the river yamuna it is not a crime not a crime if i take 10 buckets if i take 100 buckets certain point they will say you are using it for commercial use what is that limit nobody knows ownership is not very clear so adding to your point uh, as she asked about the european union <coughs> they have actually implemented integrated catchment uh, management models so what they have done is they have basically divided their uh, land into catchments rather than uh, state boundary when it comes to managing water and in those catchments they are using private models to implement the treatment part and the distribution part the whole regulation or regulatory part is handled by the government so what rate you get water at your home is governed by government 
Right. However, all the treatment part, all the other uh, thing is given uh, by the private company. So in that way, uh, the profits of the companies are very limited. That is where the limitation on private model comes. So that is, uh, I mean, there is a uh, need to develop the entire infrastructure and management system according to that if you want to come to that model, which uh, I think is uh, not a very near right now. Thanks.
Thank you. Thank you to all the speakers um, for presenting their insights uh, in the water sector. I'm Kriti Golwala from Camstrop. Uh, we are a smart water metering company. And uh, I have actually collected thoughts from all the presentations here, uh, which uh, focus on uh, sustainability and the resource part of it. And my question can be answered either by Do Dr. Pandya or Mr. Kanna here. Uh, where we talked about uh, the national water framework being into constitution right now, and there's law lawlessness of water in India here. Uh, we have talked about uh, resource and conservation for that. However, uh, the supply side or the distribution side is not very well uh, brought up to the table. So are there any frameworks devised in terms of the consumption pattern of water when it is distributed to the public? Is there something like a consumption-based billing into perspective right now? Uh, you see, consumption-based billing or the volumetric, uh, you know, charges for water has been there uh, since long time. But uh, uh, primarily because of the various uh, issues, especially the political will, and the and the issues of uh, of collection of the of the revenue. Uh, is something where where these issues this uh, this particular aspect has not really seen uh, very great success um, every time uh, i mean there have been actually certain factors which has actually vitiated the situation like uh, you know providing free power for pumping groundwater out has actually created a kind of a situation which you are seeing in the in in, in punjab and haryana and, and many other parts of the uh, country today so uh, the the issue is that yes that's an ideal towards which we have to work we may not be able to charge for the water but we have to charge for the service fee that means the the mechanism that is required to deliver the water to your doorstep is something which is not coming for free and there uh, the the efforts have been made in irrigation sector like uh, doing the P pim or 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 things like that but uh, but so far we haven't uh, got a area we have got, got we have not got to a place where we can claim any kind of sustained success can i add yeah पहले भी वॉटर मैनेजमेंट का बात था और वॉटर गवर्नेंस वाला पहला प्रेजेंटेशन था तो जो इसमें बात है की वॉटर गवर्नेंस के कुछ स्टेप्स तय किए हैं जो एज पर लीगली हमारा पंचायती राज इंस्टीट्यूशन जो लोकल लेवल पे है गवर्नमेंट ने आ, उसको हमारी डेमोक्रेसी को मजबूत करने के लिए बनाया है तो वो पानी को कैसे मैनेज करेगा तो इसमें ये भी पार्ट आता है कि पानी का टैक्सेशन कैसे होगा एसेट का भी हमने जो भी पंचायत राज एक्ट में वो भी प्रोविजन है कि जो पंचायत पानी का एसेट है वो कैसे मैनेज करेगा तो आई थिंक हम लोग पोस्टर प्रेजेंटेशन भी और भी डिटेल में समझ सकते हैं और ये टैक्सेशन सिस्टम कुछ गाँव में ऐसे सेटअप होता है जिससे वो मैनेज करते हैं चलो ठीक है थैंक यू Okay, sir. One. Can so, I add? So, <coughs> just one that way to our question. Be very short. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> your concern is very valid. I would say that no, we are not paying as per our consumption. I stayed in government colonies in Delhi, where I was getting 300 liters per day. Could you believe? While people were not getting even 50 liters, and I was not paying anything on it. So small, small amount was included in the. rent of the accommodation it was unmetered so a lot of people are getting enough water and they are not paying adequately there is no penalty for misuse there is no incentive for saving in our system i thank all the speaker for the very nice presentation and all the audience also for their attention and asking some questions thank you very much now i hand over to dr rana dr pragya